I was that girl who saw the movie Flashdance. Do you remember Flashdance? Many years ago. I saw that movie and I am not lying. The next day I went out and I got a big old perm. I cut my sweatshirts, leg warmers with every outfit and I was around the house like doing the whole. So I, I started taking dance classes five, six, seven hours a day. And uh, within about six months to a year, I started auditioning to, uh, for dance jobs. And my very first job that I got, I was 16 years old. Thank you. 16 when I booked my first job, and that was Debbie Gibson, Shake Your Love. And you can see me with the 80s, big perm. The, you know, the ripped up jeans, the whole eight, the shoulder pads. Gotta love the 80s. So I went on and I did lots of music videos and then one day I got a call to go meet Prince. When he was still Prince, then he was the artist formerly known as Prince, now he's back to Prince, but at that time he was just Prince. So they called me to go on an audition for him and they were looking for a set of identical twins and they couldn't find any and there happened to be another girl who looked like me and they hired us for these videos. The next logical thing was to go into acting, so I started doing uh, commercials. See, Nations Bank gives you tons of ways to do your banking. You can actually get a loan over the phone. Hello. Introducing the incredible new GE Profile Washer. Buon toast, vorrei una fetta de valigie. Ciao. And I did a lot of different TV shows, and then I got hired for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, look who's here. Miss Calendar. Mr. Giles. Well, uh, uh, um... Morning, kids. Morning, England. Buffy, are you supposed to be somewhere? No, I have a free. Cool. But three months into getting the show, I became a Christian. So... It's very interesting how God works. So God started to talk to me about the tools that he has in the Bible and that I was to no longer take a passive or defensive position, but he wanted me to have an offensive position and overtake my enemy before my enemy could overtake me. So I started to pray and I said, God, help me. Help me with this food issue. I need strategies. I don't know how to do any of this. And God spoke. God spoke. And he said to me, food is not your issue. And that really kind of threw me. I said, what do you mean, God? Food is my issue. That's a, I mean, food is my issue. And I heard it in my heart clear as day, food is not your issue. He said, food is merely a counterfeit comforter. And the second I heard that, I knew it was God because I'd never heard that expression before. I never heard anyone say counterfeit comfort before. And right away, he reminded me that in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is the true comforter. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. And he said, food's not your issue. Food is merely a fruit or a symptom or a result of an unhealthy root. So you don't have an issue with food. The issue is that you're using food to comfort you because of these other issues that you don't know how to deal with. Because often we're not taught how to process, how to deal. Something I talk about in my book is you have to feel and deal in order to heal. You have to feel and deal in order to heal. And we're not taught how to deal with our things. So when I felt frustrated, when I felt rejected, when I felt disappointed, I would run to food as my comforter. <laughs> now look, there are many counterfeit comforters. And one thing I found is that counterfeit comforters are universal. We all have them. Mine might be different than yours, might be different than yours, but we all have them. Food, alcohol, cigarettes, relationships outside of marriage, gambling, busyness. Do you know that being busy is actually a counterfeit comfort? Now, does that mean there's something wrong with being productive and efficient? No. But busy, the acronym for busy, being under Satan's yoke. 
Why is busyness a counterfeit comfort? Because it's so easy to not deal or to be present with yourself or be still and know that I am God. <clears throat> it's so much easier to just constantly be doing things and keeping ourselves busy and going here and going there and, and just doing life. You know, one thing I found that is I can be so busy doing life that I miss the main purpose of life. <laughs> and I think we all have to be very aware of that. Mark 4, the parable of the sower, talks about the seed not being able to come to maturity because of the cares of the world. And we all have cares, and our cares are just getting more and more and more and more. And I find that I, my whole day can be doing emails and answering texts and doing this and, and going grocery shopping and, and all the things that we have to do. We need to do those things. But if I don't put them in order and if I don't prioritize, days become weeks, become months, become years, and all I'm doing is things, all I'm doing is life, and life is dictating me, and I'm not spending any time in the main thing, which is the presence of God. Seek first the kingdom and all else will be added unto you. 